Hey, what's up? This is Seth. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to program this light switch right here. Uh, the model number is MSCL-OP153MH. So every time I need to change this thing up, I take out this huge sheet of instructions, which by the way, does come with every single one of these things. It should be in the package. When it comes to programming this thing, so there's a lot of different ways you can have this set up. You can have it automatically turn on when it senses motion, like right when you walk in the room, which may make sense for like like bathrooms or hallways or kitchens and things like that. But that probably doesn't make any sense for a bedroom because you don't want the light to turn on in the middle of the night when you're moving. Uh, you can also adjust the sensitivity. So how much movement does it take to turn this thing on? You can adjust how bright you want the light to be. You can adjust how long you want it to wait before it turns itself back off. This thing can actually learn when you do and don't want it to turn on based on how much light there is. So say for example, if there's a window or a door nearby and you don't don't want this thing to turn on when it senses motion during the day when it sees ambient light, but you do want it to turn on when it sees motion at night when there isn't any ambient light. It can just learn that, which I think is one of the coolest features about this. So I'll just uh, get started and show you how to do this. So what you're seeing right here is two of these light switches. They're both the exact same thing. So I'm just gonna be working on one of these. So to get started, what you have to do is there's gonna be a little tab right here uh, at the very bottom. You can kind of use your fingernail to pull it out like that. And as you can see, as soon as I pulled that out, uh, everything went dark. So once that tab is pulled out, what we're gonna do is we're going to push down on this thing. We're gonna push down and hold it and then push this tab back in, and we're gonna keep holding it like this for about five seconds. There we go. And now once we see that light blinking, now we know it's in programming mode. And if we just leave it like that, it'll eventually turn itself off after about a minute or so, I think. But uh, depending on which dot is blinking, that's telling us which thing we can start programming. And if you look at the instructions, you can see this bottom one down here. What that adjusts is the timeout adjustment. So how long it takes for the light to turn off. It could be one minute, three minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes, or 30 minutes. So if we wanted to, we could go ahead and push this thing again and now we can see it's blinking faster and based on which one is blinking this particular light switch is set to turn off after 15 minutes if it does not detect any motion uh, if we wanted it to be 30 minutes I could do it up there uh, if we wanted it to be five minutes it could be that one this one would be three minutes and then this one would be one minute and it really just depends on the room and you know what you do in there and how long you want the lights to stand, obviously. In most of the rooms in my house, I actually have these set to either one or five minutes. But this particular room is actually where we have our TV and we can be sitting here motionless for a while. It's not unusual. So this one I have set to 15 minutes. So go ahead and click it again. Now, there we go. It's locked in at 15 minutes. So if we wanted to move on to the next setting here. So if we go up one more. So this one is the sensitivity adjustment. So if I click this again. So what I can do now, if I want this to have low sensitivity, I could go down here and now the motion sensitivity is gonna be very, very low. And if I want it to be high, I would set it on that one. And in most cases, I have it set to high because that's kind of the whole point of having a motion sensor light switch is that if there is motion, it should turn on. But if for some reason you don't want it to turn on when you turn the page of a book or something like that, you can set it to low. So go ahead and lock this back in at high. So we move up one more. So this one right here, this is what we call the auto on adjustment. So auto on basically just means that the lights are going to turn on when it senses motion through this little motion sensor. So if we do want that to turn on anytime it senses motion, first we're gonna click this and we're going to go down here and lock it in with this bottom blinking light like that. So now that I've locked it in like that, anytime it senses motion, it's gonna turn on automatically. However, that's not actually what I wanna do here. So I'm gonna click it again. Now, if we wanted to click this one right there, whether somebody is moving or not, it's not gonna turn on unless somebody actually clicks this button and then it will turn on. That's gonna follow the timeout rules that we set in the previous step. So it's gonna turn off after 15 minutes in our case. But uh, again, it's not gonna turn on at all unless we push that button if it's programmed in like this. But again, I don't want it like that either. I wanna go up here and do what's called ALD mode and that stands for ambient light detect. And this I think is one of the coolest things about this light switch is that it can learn when you do and don't want it to turn on based on how much ambient light is in the room. Say this light switch is in a place like it is 
on my house right here, where as you can see in the reflection, there's a window in the background. So I don't want it to turn on when it senses motion if there's enough ambient light in the room from just daylight, but I do want it to turn on when it's night out or when the shades are drawn and there's not any ambient light and it detects motion. But how does this thing know how much I think is enough ambient light or not? Well, that's where this learning technology comes into play because the way this works is, say if I walk into the room and in my mind, there's enough ambient light. So so I don't want it to turn on, but it does turn on because it's not sure what I think is enough ambient light. So if I didn't want it to turn on, all I'd have to do is hit this button and turn it off within five seconds of it turning on. And that will tell it, oh, okay, I guess he didn't want it to turn on. So I won't turn on next time when I see that much light. And on the flip side, say if I walk in and I don't think there's enough ambient light and it doesn't turn on, again, all I have to do within five seconds of walking in the room is hit that button and turn it on and that will tell it, oh, okay, so I guess that wasn't enough light. I'll turn on next time I see motion and there's that level of light in the room. And it basically just learns your behavior and it learns what you wanna do. It does take a couple times of correcting it, but once it knows, it knows, and you never have to think about it again. So it's really cool. And then if we move up here to this one, so this is called OWO mode, which stands for off while occupied. And the instructions don't really explain what this even means. It just says, please visit this link for applications and details. So I've never used this and I don't even fully understand what it is other than just what the name implies. So I'm gonna include a link to where it tells you to go in the description beneath this video So if you want to explore that uh, feel free to check out that link But anyway, I'm gonna set that in and uh, we'll move back up to this top one here So this last one is the occupied level adjustment so if we click on this, so now what we can do here is we can either have this be at 100% on, and that's what's gonna happen if we set it in at this one. So basically anytime it turns on, whether we push it ourselves or it turns on because it senses motion, it's gonna be on 100% as bright as it can go or we can set it to half power. So it's gonna be like half on, half off. So not gonna blind you when you walk in the door. Or we can get really specific and set it however we want it to be if we click on this and then set the exact level that we want like this. And then there we go. And apparently if you go up here to this top one, uh, again, the instructions don't say much about this. It just says, please visit lutron.com forward slash maestro sensor install for additional programming information. I have no idea what that's all about. I've never been there, but again, I'll click that link in the description below as well if you want to check it out but I've never messed with it and uh, that's pretty much it once you're all set what I always do is I just leave this thing blinking for about a minute and it just turns off and then it's good to go maybe there's a faster way to close out the programming mode but you know once I have everything locked in the way that I want it to go I just kind of walk away and it handles itself so it's a pretty cool light switch, but uh, as you can see, there's a little bit of know-how involved in terms of how to program it exactly the way you want it. Once it's set, it performs very, very well. So I'm gonna include an Amazon affiliate link to this uh, in the description below, but uh, I got all mine from Lowe's and Home Depot, and I'm sure these are at pretty much any big box home improvement store. So if you decide to get one of these, I wish you all the best.